Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of True Blood, Season 5, Episode 8. Um, unfortunately, this episode, I think, showed the show's biggest kind of flaw, which I've said multiple times. I'm getting tired of saying it, and I'm sure you're probably getting tired of hearing it, sorry. But, just too many people, and just too much going on last night. There was, I mean, all 20 major characters had screen time last night, and what kind of ends up happening when they do that is that... It hurts everyone. You know, it just kind of... Not everyone... They think they're giving everyone their time to, like, their moment, their time to shine and everything like that. Everything like that. And so they're just kind of really hindering everybody. And it made the show a bit of a mess. It wasn't... I'm not saying that it was all bad. There was stuff that was, you know, very good and stuff that was good and stuff that just felt unnecessary and even extra unnecessary when you, you know, take a look at how many other things they have to get to. I mean, I, I... Every time they cut away to another character, you know, even if it's someone that I like, even if it was a storyline that I was enjoying last night, I would kind of just, like, groan and just be like, oh, that's right, this person. You know, for everybody. For people I like, people I didn't like, I was just like, all right, you. Again. You know, for the fourth time tonight. And it's just... I don't want to be doing that while I'm watching a show. I just want to, you know, not even think about that kind of stuff. But last night I couldn't help it. And um, it was such a difference. I was watching this show with 20 characters. They're all in the episode. And then you go to like something like Breaking Bad right after it. And there's seven major characters. And not all of them are in an episode. So it's, it's such a contrast. And it's, it, really, the, 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 it really is like the glaring problem with this show. Which I, I'm not alone saying this. But um, yeah, that, that problem was eminent last night. I mean, I'll just go over basically. Look, we had Suki and Jason. We had Tara and Pam. Aliseed and all the wolves, Lafayette, which joined with Terry. Um, what else we got? We had Hoyt and Jessica, everything with Sam and Luna, and then everything with the Authority. That's seven different things going on, and in those seven different things, there's like multiple storylines and shit. That's too much for one hour of television. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll get right into it. Just starting with um, with Suki and and Jason. Where, again, um, one thing they're doing really well this season is they're getting rid of, um, not characters, they're getting rid of um, cliffhangers fast. Like, Suki, you know, shooting the, the, the fairy shit out of her just wasn't, um, it wasn't something that I, that I wanted to see extend for multiple episodes, and it didn't, thank God. You know, Jason came over and talked to her right away. Over, one, two, three, she's not going to get rid of her power, she's going to use them. Uh, and it was a nice quiet scene like last week, so that's fine. And, you know, they have, good, they have good scenes together, the two of them. So I like that a lot. Um, then when they went to the, you know, the, the fairy place and they've tried to really figure out how to figure out who killed Sookie and Jason's parents. You know, it was, it was fine. I thought we were going to learn something. Uh, I was wrong. I thought it was Russell. It looks like it's a brand new character. Of course, a brand new character because that's exactly what we, uh, we fucking need. And, um... So I guess they're going to spend the rest of the season trying to find this brand new character. Um, unless it is a character that we do know and they're just hiding it. Um, also, it was very, 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 very odd to see that little, like, uh, made fun of it last night, the little Nightmare on Elm Street scene at the end. Um, it was just kind of cheesy. The CGI was just really cheesy and all the, and all the stuff with Sookie in this episode. So... I, I don't know if I'm really looking forward to it. I want to see kind of how it blends in with everything else more than looking to see where it goes. But, I don't know. It, it was just, I mean, it was all right. That's it. Tara and Pam had good stuff again last night. More character-growing stuff. It was a little probably maybe too sinister. Um, yeah, this, like, white trash woman was a complete bitch and a little racist, uh, or very, very racist. And... You know, Tara Want got her little bit of revenge. Was it that deserving? Probably not, but I don't. We don't really know what how awful, how badly she treated Tara when they were younger. So I don't know. Uh, but the thing about that story, as much as I, I like what they're doing with both of them, that felt unnecessary last night. Like it felt so separate from everything else that, with everything that was going on and having like plot moved forward, this was just like pure character stuff that moved forward, and it just felt out of place last night. Uh, it was it was good, but just kind of unnecessary. All right, Alice, you know, all right, first of all, um, got a nice long sex scene for you, so good on you, buddy. Uh, I officially don't give a shit about the wolves. 
I thought they were going to bring that into some other storyline. Instead, you know, I mean, when they were doing the whole, like, oh, in this corner, it's, you know, this fucker, and in this corner, you know, Alice, and I was just, I don't care, like, get on with it. And then they got on with it, and instead of Alice winning, the other guy wins, and I guess we're not done with this, and that sucks, because I wanted to be done with this. I, I mean, maybe everyone else out there is enjoying it more than me, I just, it just... Um, I thought they were going to bring this in to other stuff. The only real connection we have to it is um, Marcus's mother connected to, like, Sam and everything. So we'll see maybe if that does get connected. I thought for sure they were going to start connecting it this week, but they didn't. And, um, yeah, I guess we'll just see how that goes. Right, Lafayette and... Uh, well, first of all, Lafayette, uh, I like that he had a nice little scene with Jesus, got rid of the, the stitches on his face before connecting with Arlene and Holly and Terry and everybody. I that Lafayette joining them helps I think Lafayette this season and it helps certainly helps Terry's storyline. Uh gives it a little bit more energy. Uh it's a lot more fun. So I enjoy that. I actually, you know, I'm I'm on board, not on board. I'm I'm, I'm tolerating it more because Lafayette's there. So it's you know, and with Arlene and everything. But the whole idea that one of them is going to have to kill the other, Terry with, uh, Terry and Patrick, it's just like, you know, if they're just going to end up killing Patrick, who cares? Um, not even me. And if, if they do end up actually killing Terry, that means we're just going to leave Patrick on the show. Like, he's done enough to really warrant a regular spot on the show from now on. So I just hope they do, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. I hope they just don't do something where Patrick, like, flips out and, um goes on like that or tries to really do something to Terry which forces Terry to do it it would just be kind of cheap so I don't I don't really know but um, I'll wait and see that's that's a future criticism which isn't fair uh, yet so we'll wait and see on that one also annoyed again 950 they decided to cut to Terry for the second week in a row it's just like you know can we not do them at 950 please Hoyt and Jessica okay I know she broke your heart you know brother but she doesn't deserve to have a gun to her head as far as what you're concerned, pretty much. And the fact that he did that, you know, and even talked to her without, like, letting her go right away, it just pissed me off. It was just immature, and I didn't care. And uh, the only thing that I liked about it, again, is that it happened quickly. They got, you know, Hoyt, they captured Jessica right away in this episode, and then he released her, you know, by the end of the episode. Of course, Hoyt, Hoyt goes missing by the end of the episode, and then the guy pulls over, puts the gun on him, and I thought for a second, are they going to do it? Are they going to kill him? Nope, they don't. They cut to, cut away, so it's going to be a cliffhanger. Which is great. If it's a cliffhanger, that means he's not dead. That means he just keeps on going, you know? Fuck. Sam. Sam, actually, I loved everything with Sam this episode. The beginning of it with Luna uh, annoyed me because I was just like, what? First of all, it was very weird editing, and then it was like, why? She's going to get up and leave, isn't she? And, you know, even though he said don't. So at first I was going to be annoyed about that, but then when she turned into Sam, I thought it was actually really, really funny. And um, Sam Trammell, who plays Sam, is uh, really good at playing um, other people playing Sam, pretty much, or, or as Sam. And he was, not only was he funny this episode, but he was actually believable, uh, which is difficult to do. And um, so I loved everything they did with that, and I liked that Andy, you know, was helping Sam. Um, again, they're doing... A better job with Andy still this season, so uh, you know I like that stuff. And um, it looks like now they're gonna, act, I guess, join with Jessica, which helps. They're probably gonna have to look for Hoyt, which sucks. But it looks like that's them joining together like that. I think I might like that that storyline definitely going forward as we enter, you know, the last section of the season. Uh, I hope it will. Anyway, all right, the authority. Um, I was right last week that I said it's basically gonna be not only Eric saving Nora, but Eric saving Bill. Um, first, let me just say that last week I mentioned about Russell, I was kind of, it was strange that he was just kind of going to be a hired gun until he doesn't feel like it. Kind of weird to see him. All he did this week was like flirt with Steve Newell and he's kind of like in the background. Um, maybe they'll change that by the end of the season. And again, I'll, I'll, you know, criticize that if, if they don't really do anything with him for the remainder of the episodes. But it was just kind of, I mean, I know this one was a little more about, like, Eric and everything like that, so that's why he was kind of put on the back burner, which I should be happy about because, you know, that's one of the th things I'm talking about here, about, you know, putting some characters toward the back for an episode. But uh, it was just a little more strange this week than I thought it was last week. Um, 
it was a good scene with Eric and Nora, I thought. Um, just well acted, well done. And in fact, Stephen Moyer, who plays Bill, directed the episode. And while they gave him a ton of technical stuff to do, and some stuff he did well, some stuff, you know, not so well. The CGI budget looked a little weak in this episode. Uh, but I will say, I thought he got great work out of all the actors. Much better work out of all the actors, actually, than... Well, not much better. Just everyone seemed to up their game a little bit this week more. And maybe because he is an actor that he got better work out of him. Um, I mean, it just seemed that way to me. I don't know. But, um, yeah, great stuff with, uh, with Eric and Nora. The Bill stuff, you know, like I said, I thought he was going to kind of turn to the dark side here, but it happened a little too quickly and a little too easily. Um, and the flashback just seemed kind of, it was kind of too jarring. It was kind of just like thrown in all of a sudden, like, yeah, all right, there you go. This is why he's going to do this. And I usually like Bill's flashbacks. They're always so sad and it's just, you know, it's just usually just well acted, well done. This one was just kind of out of place. And, um, you know, the big cliffhanger is like, oh, they're going to destroy the true blood factories. It's like, you know, yeah, you know, they're going to kill bottles instead of people. That's the problem. But, um, I mean, yeah, I, I hate, I hate being so, you know, I hate being like so negative with, you know, the show because I was enjoying so much of the first like half of the season that these last two weeks I've been a little more down on it. And... You know, I, I don't want to be that way, so I hope, you know, we're two-thirds through the season. I hope the last third is able to kind of wrangle all this stuff together and really, you know, get something good going on. They usually have, they've had kind of weaker finishes the past couple of seasons, but, um, you know, I, I hope they can rebound after these two kind of, like, stumbling episodes and uh, get all those characters together. Uh, but we'll wait and see. But let me know, maybe you guys enjoyed it a hell of a lot more than I did. Anyway, I guess it's me signing off, so until next week. Later, guys.